All right, guys, welcome to the very first live of uh, Mysteries Unknown. Normally don't do this kind of stuff, uh, but uh, tonight I've got uh, Daniel with me. What's up, Daniel? What's up, buddy? How's it going, man? It's going good. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I've had my coffee and uh, been excited to have you on here and kind of talk about uh, uh, Bigfoot and this upcoming eclipse. Um and maybe come a uh, talk about why that might affect uh, some of the behaviors that these creatures have, possibly, and then have a you know a call-in show. I've always wanted to do that, and uh, it's taken me all day to figure out how to do that. So hopefully somebody will come in because right now I don't think we even have anybody watching. But anyways, what's going on in your neck of the woods, man? Uh, rain, a lot, a lot of rain. So pretty much. Well. That's probably going to ruin the chances of seeing anything in it. Yeah, probably. They said, like, we should be able to see, like, 60% of it or something like that. But <clears throat> I think what they said was the it's it's only going to last, like, four minutes and some yep. change. So yep. it's going to be relatively quick. But I think the, the next time this will happen, it'll be, like, 2446 or 2444 or something like that. So Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be a while. <laughs> well, I mean, they. Oh, well, here's another thing, though. I read because I, I wanted to. I just don't want to, you know, not be a good uh, guest or co-host or whatever. <clears throat> and see, I got to get headphones now. So, so you, I got to get more legit. I got to get the <laughs> That's whole right. mic. Yep. You you got to get it together, Daniel. I will. I got to now. You know, we'll, we'll see how this goes. But um, I did a little bit of research, and what's really really weird about this. Uh, and they're calling it a total solar eclipse. Yeah. Um, that not only is there going to be a total solar eclipse, but the eight major planets, because you know they don't include Pluto, which when I was growing up, Pluto was a planet. Yeah. Okay. Um, but all other eight planets are going to be aligned. There, it's that's, going to be perfect alignment. That's wild, man. I uh, I don't understand how you know, like all that stuff works. And then you had the, uh, the earthquakes, you know, in New York that they had in that whole area. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I just really got that one. Yeah. A lot of weird stuff. Like you had the earthquakes, you have the, uh, what are those, uh, bugs called the Akedas that are coming in. And yeah, there's, there's, there's going to be two hatching broods of them. Yeah. Uh, but I think it said what a 19 year one and a 17 year one. Yeah. Yeah, so it's yeah. going to get been pretty wild this year. It's just been really weird, and it, it makes you wonder why all that stuff happens. But, you know, I know a lot of times with uh, uh, animals and stuff, they're really affected by the moon and the cycle. And I know when I was a cop, man, like, people would just get stupid on uh, full moons, you know, when th something like that would happen. And, and so it makes you wonder. I'm really curious because there's not a lot of people talking about it, but it makes you wonder if that's going to affect um, – sightings and what happens with uh with bigfoot you know I, I really am curious well like you just mentioned um <clears throat> they said uh sorry about that they said Are you, that good? you said that um it affects animals different and, and i'm a firm believer in that like yeah animals act really really weird when certain events like well, number one they know when when a, when a hurricane's coming they know when an earthquake's about to happen especially dogs um, yeah, so it's, it's really weird on when you see things like that happen or you see an upcoming event, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, there's, I think they, they don't pay attention. Yeah, so. no, they don't. And, uh, just for you guys, just hopping on, I, I just realized that I had this live set to private. So, uh, <laughs> you missed the first part of this, uh, this, uh, this live, we talked about some good stuff already, but, uh, it does make you wonder, man, like, um, you know, I, I'm curious to see if the sightings go up, you know, and if they do uh, have these encounters, if if it's going to change their behavior at all. So it's really got me curious. But uh, anyways, guys, if you are new to, here to the show, uh, we're all about uh, Bigfoot encounters and uh, the unknown mysteries of the universe. Uh, my friend Daniel here with me, he has had several encounters uh, with Bigfoot. And so I wanted to bring him on here tonight. 
and talk about some of the encounters he's had and then give you guys an opportunity to call into the show if you want to ask him any questions or if you just are curious about the topic or have had an encounter and you'd like to talk about it. Um, I would love to hear from you. The number's there at the bottom. It's 479-345-1377. So, Daniel, till somebody hops on here and, and gives us a call, why don't you talk to our audience who who haven't met you yet and um, haven't heard your encounter? Why don't you kind of walk them through uh, that first encounter you had in, in Washington uh, when you were a kid with on your dad's property? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that wasn't really the first encounter. It was actually the first sighting. Okay. Um, yeah, I was pr- probably 12, 13, something like that. Um, so from what, from what I, um, recall, you know, and I've told a story on here before is that the first time that, that I thought I had a sighting is we had a really bad storm hit. Um, we, my dad had just purchased this land. It was like five acres of land, um, in a pretty wooded area. There were a couple houses that were built, but, you know, there was a lot of acreage between each house. Um, lived down an old gravel road. I, I'm assuming it was an old logging road uh, for, you know, for people to get back there. And and so our driveway, if you're driving down, our driveway was on the left. Uh, my dad, had, you know, had already cleared out a small area because his intention was on building a house. And uh, so we were living in a fifth wheel. We just moved back with my dad. Uh, we had some issues with my mom and my stepdad. Uh, so me and my younger brother moved back with my dad. He bought the land while we were visiting family in Tacoma, Washington. Um, he had the fifth wheel moved. And in, it was over spring break, I want to believe. So over uh, spring break while we were in, in uh, Tacoma visiting my aunt and uncle, um, he had moved the fifth wheel there had strapped it all down, anchored it all down, had built uh, a deck, you know, on the, on the front, um, and, you know, put a little, um, was going to put like a little, uh, roof over the deck part, you know, just kind of make it, you know, uh, a, a, not a permanent home, but a temporary home. And, uh, one night we had that real storm, real bad storm hit. And, uh, if you don't know if anybody's familiar with what a fifth wheel is, you have a part that, where the truck will back underneath. And then on the upper part is where my brother and I, our, our beds were. And uh, I slept on the side that was facing or the side where the woods were at. Um, my brother s- slept on the side where the, the, the deck, the porch was. And um, yeah, th- thunder, lightning, really heavy, heavy rain, uh, rain just big sheets of rain. And just, I'm laying on my back and I'm looking up and because the storm was keeping me up, felt like our, our fifth wheel, our camper, literally lean, like it, like something hit it. And then it just kind of like rolled, uh, over to the left and they came crashing back down. And I looked out the window the windows were probably about like maybe this wide, but about like this long. So I'm going to try to get a cam camera. So they were, they were probably maybe two and a half, three feet long by maybe, you know, maybe eight to 10 inches high. So it wasn't really anything big. It was kind of small, kind of little hand cranky. You can open them up a little bit. And, uh, I looked, pulled the curtain back a little bit and I looked and I saw something walking off into the, into the woods. And I just screamed my dad, Hey dad, it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a GD Bigfoot and my dad, you know, he's yelling, you know, Hey, you know, you, you know, don't, you know, don't, don't say that word. Don't say that word. And I go, dad, that's what it was. It was a GD Bigfoot. And I told you, I told you not to use that word. I go, Oh dad, what do you want me to call it? It was a Bigfoot. That's all it was. And he was telling me not to say GD. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and, that's, and, my that's good of us, man. <laughs> and my brother kind of woke up and, and want to know what was going on. And my dad shushed me real quick. Uh, the next morning we went out and it had rained all night long. So the chance of any tracks being out there were gone. Uh, hmm. it, it literally it, it, any, any tracks, uh, were erased because of all the rain. Um, I remember when it walked into the woods, lightning, a big flash of lightning, uh, happened. And I watched it walk underneath this one tree that my dad had left there. Um, and I saw where the branch was and its head almost touched the branch. 
when it walked underneath the branch of this tree. Um, why my dad kept that tree up, uh, I don't know, but but he did. And uh, so the next morning we went out and I immediately went looking right on the side of the camper. And on the side of the camper, there was a huge dent on the side of the camper right where this thing had hit. And uh, I noticed some of the straps where my dad had strapped down the camper. Um, they were pulled. The anchors were completely pulled up out of the, out of the ground. Um, some of the the, the uh, cement blocks, um, those blocks were just shattered. Uh, crum some were crumbled and cracked. So my dad actually had to replace all those. And um, I go, Daddy walked underneath. It walked underneath this tree, and he's like nothing walked under the tree and my dad it, its head almost hit that branch and he goes he looked at the branch and he goes and he gets a tape measure and he looks up and it was it was a little over eight feet tall wow from the branch and then so it was the, the this sasquatch was probably close to eight feet tall um so the branch was like eight feet up in the air and it walked underneath the branch like no problem but its head almost touched the branch and then uh we were uh that was that's the first time i saw it my brother wanted to know what was going on and my dad said a branch hit the you know hit hit the side of the the camper but this dent was massive you, you could tell it ran like it probably ran full force and just with everything it had try to push it you know and uh yeah it was pretty uh that was like the first i wasn't can't say it was a confirmed sighting but i'm pretty sure that's what yeah. it was well i can um, imagine as is a kid man like that that probably traumatized you i'm sure because that's like a that's something you're not supposed to see right and it makes you wonder why i i guess it would you know lead credence to the fact that these things are really territorial like it probably just didn't want you guys there i mean obviously if it if it wanted to hurt you it, it would have but you know I, i'm sure that was that was extremely traumatizing you know oh yeah for sure i mean at, you know at the time now i wasn't your typical kid you know i wasn't uh you know why everybody one of my favorite times of, of school was going to the library right and a lot of kids you know i don't know what they were looking at but with me i was looking at stuff i looked for everything bigfoot loch ness monster uh sharks snakes you know i looked for all that kind of stuff you know yeah and um you know i remember when i was younger i don't remember what show it was on but the patterson gimlin film came on and there was just there was a discussion on, it and that just fascinated me. Like, holy smokes! Oh yeah, you know. And then, and at first, you know, I thought it was in California, but then I heard people. You know, I would hear, you know, my uncles and stuff like that talking, and and I'm like, okay, you know, what are they talking about? They can only be talking about Bigfoot, you know. So when it, when I first saw the Patterson Gimlin film, you know, I looked for everything I could. You know, I, I was looking for everything I could, but back in the day, you know, I didn't understand what microfish was. So I didn't know that I could go in and search old newspapers in different parts of the country or different parts of the region and look for that. I was pretty much just relying on what books were there in the library, you know, and they, they were very limited books. Um, uh, now, when I had my first absolute confirmed sighting, when I absolutely 100% without a doubt knew what I was looking at, um, I saw, uh, we were coming home from Tacoma, uh, visiting my aunt and uncle again. We lived, this is way out in Graham, Washington. And as we were coming down the, the dirt road, now the dirt road had some dips and rises in it. So it wasn't always, it wasn't a complete straight road. It kind of, when it, when it left the paved road, it kind of went down at a small little grade. Then it would level out a little bit. Then it would come up a little rise. And it, it did that the whole entire part of the road, as I remember it. Um, now at where the, where the, um, the dirt road and the main paved road, there was only one street light and it. That's, that's all it was. The rest of the dirt road was completely black. There was no lights down this, this dirt road. And there was very few lights on this main road, but where this road met the dirt road, there was a street light. Okay. So we turn off, I go down, we're going down and I'm sitting in the front seat this time. I brother's in the back seat sleeping and my dad's driving and as we came up this little rise i saw like eye shine it was like an amberish reddish eye shine and that that kind of i wasn't sure what it was and i go dad i there i think i just saw something up in the road i saw an eye shine 
And he's like, oh, it's just probably a deer. I go, dad, I don't think deer have, you know, like a reddish, a reddish or an amberish, you know, uh, yeah. eye shot. And he goes, well, maybe it's a porcupine. And I go, well, I don't know. I've never seen a porcupine at night. Now, there were porcupine in this area. You know, we I would see them, you know. Um, and so I'm like, okay, dad, turn your brights on. Turn your, your fog lights on because you just put these new, like, fo- driving lights on or whatever. And they lit up the, the entire area. They were brighter than his brights. And um, so we come back over this rise. We go down. We go forward a little bit. We come back up on this rise. And he turns the lights on. Um, and there she was, she was squatting wow. on the side of the road on my side, the passenger side of the, of the dirt road. And she just stood up and Josh, I didn't think she was going to stop rising up. She just kept going and kept going and kept going. Um, her head probably would have touched that branch that my dad measured from, you know, months before, um, but yeah, she just kept rising up and then she kind of like looked. Now when she turned, she turned at her waist. And so that's when I saw a full frontal and I knew she, I knew it was a female. Okay. Right. She, she had the anatomy yeah. of a female. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she just looked and then she turned back the way she, she, so she was, if I'm trying to remember, she was standing where her, her, her um, left shoulder was facing us. And then she turned to face us and then she turned back and then walked off into the woods and i go oh my gosh dad what you know what was that you know and he just very calmly he just kept driving he didn't speed up he didn't slow down he just kept driving like like he didn't see anything and as we drove the the way the, the lights were angled as we drove by i looked over and she was still on the side of the road, but she was kind of hunkered down a little bit. And I watched her eyes blink twice. And wow. then it was probably maybe, I don't know, maybe about two, 300 feet uh, to where our driveway was. And my dad turned into there. Now, before the car was even at a complete stop, I was already, seatbelt was off, door was opening up. I had my keys in, the, in my hand and I took off at a dead sprint up the pool onto the porch and into the end of the, the camper my dad uh came in a couple minutes later a couple seconds later from grabbing my little brother he came in and i'm like dad what was that what was that what was that and he's like you know what that was and and i'm like hmm. dad what's that? he goes he goes don't you know what that was and so you know i go dad you know I, I'm, I'm i'm laying on his bed my little brother is up my my dad had put him up in his bed and my dad goes over into the cupboard, starts pulling all this food out, you know, fruits and vegetables and stuff. And my dad was a, was a bird watcher. And uh, so he had put this huge, uh, long pole, this tall pole, on one corner of the deck that he built. And he put a platform. And the, the reason for that was he wanted to put a bird uh, feeder up there. Uh, and it was, a, it was a big platform. It was probably, you know, 20 inches by 20 inches. And he wanted to see what would come in so he could sit there and take pictures of all these different birds that were in the area. And he got a ladder and he put it up against the, the thing, put all the put all the food up there, puts a lat gets the ladder, puts a ladder down on the porch, um, comes back in, looks for some like um I thought it was like axle grease. I don't know what it was, it's some type of greasy substance. I'm just gonna say axle grease. Why I don't know, but he goes and takes a rag and he squirts it into this rag. And then he goes up to the pole and starts spreading all around the pole, up and down the pole. And I, I asked him, I go, Dad, why, why did you do that? Why was, he goes, that's so, so nothing gets that food. And I go, oh, you mean like raccoons? And he's like, yep, raccoons. Now, I don't know why I said raccoons, but then he, when he validated raccoons, it just kind of made me relax a little bit. I remember feeling a little more, you know, secure, a little more, you know, safe. And uh, I'm laying in bed. I said, Dad, can I kind of sleep with you? And he's like, yeah, you can sleep with me. And and uh, I remember him because he used to smoke. He would smoke outside. So he stepped out. And I'm like, where are you going? He goes, I'm just going out to have a cigarette. So he went out, lit a cigarette. And I heard him. I heard some, like, talking. Hmm. So I got closer. And I kind of listened. It was my dad talking. And I heard my dad going, 
you know, I know you saw us, you know, we saw you. He goes, I just, this is, I just want to live here safe with my, with my boys. I want to make a home. You know, we don't mean to do you any harm. The food that I put up there is yours. You know, um, just please don't scare my boys. Don't hurt my boys. You know, they're, 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 they're not going to do you any harm. They're not going to do nothing to hurt you. You know, we can live here in peace or whatever. I mean, again, I'm just paraphrasing on things my dad said because it was one, it was so long ago. And then two, I didn't really get to hear everything he said. So I hear him take his last drag of a cigarette and then I hear him uh, throw it into the butt can that he had out there. And I run and I jump back on the bed and he comes in and uh, I go, Dad, who are you talking to? And he goes, mm -hmm. what? I goes, oh, I was praying. And I go, well, you didn't say amen. And he goes, oh, yeah, amen. You know, so he went, he took a shower and then he comes in and lays down. And, and I was like, like I said, I'm, I'm 12, 13 years old. You know, 12, 13 year olds don't normally sleep with their parents, but I just felt super safe with my dad, you know, being right there. And uh, so I go and uh, we started talking a little bit and I must have dozed off. And uh, I want to say probably at 1, 2.30 in the morning, maybe. Um, I hear this loud creak. Like the boards on the deck were groaning. Like something heavy was was walking on there or had already walked on there. And then I heard it again and I heard it again. And I was about to say something. And my dad, I look over at my dad. My dad's going like this. And I'm like, I'm like, dad, is there, is there, is there one out there? You know, and I'm whispering and he's like, no, you know, he goes like, there's, there's two, there may be more out there. And about that time I heard something. Now I'm the, where my dad's bed was situated was against the wall of where that one had tried to push the camper over. And I hear something run by real quick and you could feel it. It was a heavy. And I go, dad, there's more out there. And he's like, yeah. And that's when we heard the, the, the vocalizations. Um, it was like, <laughs> like they were getting angry, you know, and that went on for a couple of minutes and we heard more walking around on the deck and then the next thing I remember is the sun kind of peeking through the, the, the shades a little bit. So I must have I must have fell asleep. Um, I remember my dad before, you know, I probably dozed off. I looked over. My dad had his gun on his chest. Um, as soon as I woke up, I jumped off the bed in my, my pajamas, opened up the door. And I, from where I could, where I could look out the door, I could look up and see there was nothing up on that little metal platform my dad had put up there. There was nothing up there. And I'm like, Dad, Dad, they took the food. They took the food. And he's like, What? I go, They took the food. And I run back out. And uh, about that time, my brother wakes up, but I'm already outside. And I did something I wasn't supposed to do. I climbed up on the railing of the deck so I can even look closer up there. So I'm looking. I'm back on the railing of this deck. I'm like, Dad, Dad, it's all gone. It's all gone. And I walked, I jumped off and I walked over and I looked and you could see where something had grabbed the pole and then something had taken its finger and dragged it all the way down the pole. And I go, dad, something grabbed the pole, something grabbed the pole. And, uh, my brother was like, yeah. what, grabbed the pole? what grabbed the pole? And, you know, before I could say anything, I said, Bigfoot <laughs> and my dad, and my dad goes, what, you know, and my brother's like, Oh, he goes, I've seen some little ones of those around here and we're like what what do you mean he goes yeah he goes whenever we we're out here playing or we play music he goes i see him standing inside or sitting inside the tree line listening to our music or watching us play so yeah that that's where you know i had my my actual sightings and then um other that, other things are just experiences things that happened way before that contact yeah. with my dad um one of the scariest ones ever i had like i had my top my shoe untied uh, my boot untied when I was up in a deer stand with my dad. Thought I was that one, to that one really got me. I mean that because that's about as close as you can get. And, and guys, if you're watching this, and Daniel's been on my show several times, and and we've documented all these encounters, and I would encourage you to go back and and listen to them. They're they're very good. And one thing about his encounters is the stories never change. And uh, one of the things you look for when I was a cop is 
people's changes, you know, their stories changes. His, his never has. And so, um, you know, I just thought you guys would enjoy hearing his encounters again and having him on here. And also, man, I, I would encourage you to call in. This is the very first time we've ever tried this. So, uh, we'll just see how it goes. But if you want to talk to Daniel, ask him some questions or ask me any questions, now's a good time, uh, to do it. But Daniel, I know that, um, at that property, there seemed to be, you know, several of them on, on the property. And I know you talked a little bit about, uh, about one particular one that, um, if I remember correctly, that, uh, he was kind of the younger, uh, of, of all of them. Um, do you think that, uh, that's the one that, uh, come and hit y'all's trailer? Do you think that, uh, it was the, the, the alpha male or do you think it was the, the younger one? Well, I, I think one, I think it was a family unit. Right. Um, and my brother said that he saw a couple of young, like small ones. So the one that I saw that I like 100% saw was, was I'm saying the mom was the female was the mom. Yeah. Um, my brother uh, claims to have seen the two smaller ones. So I'm thinking they're, you know, younger siblings. Um, the alpha male, um, I, I didn't see him like directly. Like I, my brother and I, we built a tree house up in the woods, not far from the clearing of where my dad had cleared out, um, maybe a good 200 feet into the woods. And there have been a couple times where uh, me and my brother would be up in our little tree house and I would look out the window and I would catch something like move, you know, real quick out behind one of the trees. Um or he would just be kind of standing in the shadows a little bit and then he'd move forward just a tiny bit just to let you know that he was there. Mm. Um, but it wasn't, and he was massive. I mean, he was a big boy. Um, I didn't, I felt that getting like, like he was angry at us or there. It was more indifferent with him. I think he was just kind of checking on us, make sure we didn't do anything stupid or if that, the one that did hit the house. So I'm saying he was like the, the, the oldest out of the kids. Yeah. Um, if he was having a bad day, I think that the, the, uh, the alpha male, the dad would find out where we were at and he would kind of be in the area in case that one decided he wanted to really be, be a, a pain, you know? So, yeah. but yeah, I honestly believe, I honestly believe that the, the, I'll say the, the oldest, um, um sibling uh he was i think he definitely was the one and i think he was just trying to show you know hey i'm bigger than yeah. you i'm bigger than you uh we've lived here longer than you have and i i'm good, pretty much going to do whatever i want and yeah. i think the mom and the dad put him in check uh because the only time i ever saw him again like i said i believe was was um that one time he tried to push the camper over. Um, but his presence was felt a lot. I, I, I would feel, I would feel scared in parts of the property that I never felt scared before. Um, and I'd have to go back. I, I rushed back to the house as, as quick as I could. Um, and I grabbed my little brother, like, hey, let's go. He's like, Oh, we're not done playing. I'm like, no, yeah, we're done. Let's go. Let's yeah. Well, so, I think that they're, you know, they're, they're always watching and they, and I've interviewed a lot of people at this point, but one thing that's always seems to be a common tread or, or trait with this is if, if you see one or you hear one, there's probably another one really close, oh, yeah. you know, close by. And, and you definitely were surrounded by them. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm grateful that, uh, you know, the, you, you're here to tell, tell that, um, encounter. And, you know, we're going to kind of get off in the weeds here for a minute, maybe, and, and talk about some different opinions and, Oh yeah. And that's all we can have, right? Is is opinions. And guys, I remind you again if you want to call in this show, uh the number is four seven nine three four five thirteen seventy seven. There's a, a marker scrolling down below there that lists the number. But you know, I've heard lots of different opinions about what these things are and um and how they they act and, and different things like that. But you know, I know we said it earlier, but when I was a cop, the amount of calls we would get would go up substantially when there was a full moon um, or certain times of year, right? And I would really think that this, this, this eclipse could uh, affect a lot of that uh, that's going on. I think we're getting a call. 
Oh. We'll see how this goes. Hey, Josh. Hey. How you doing, man? There we go. Pretty good, you? We're good, man. We're good. Um, I just lost my camera feed there. Uh, but we're doing good, man. Um, what's going on? Thank you. Pretty good. I'll call me for a second. Yeah, I'm glad you did, man. And um, guys, for the, y'all that are listening, Josh, is uh, he's been on the show before. He, uh, You're in Texas, right? Yes. There was actually a new sign trip by a mile for me. About a, week, about a week ago. Really? Yes, about about same mile. I'm on 37 in Texas. The other sign was on 312, right behind the house. Why, why don't you, uh, for our audience who didn't hear your story, why don't you tell them a little bit about your encounter? For the first the first time I had a the candle was when I was sitting outside on the on the back porch tapping uh, like a metal wing, which is kind of similar, uh, like acting like a tree knock. In about maybe not even five seconds, there was a wood knock for about no, about ten to twenty yards away from the house. In the next night, I I heard the like that big, like a yelp and bush starting to be pushed away, like like he's going back into the tree lines. About a year later, you know, sometimes how 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 the windows all up on the mobile homes. Yeah. It, it, the head is about top of his head is almost even with my living room window. Okay. That's bad it. <laughs> well, that's enough, right? That's uh, that's scary uh-huh. enough. And uh, I know that uh, once you know these things are out there, that really changes everything uh, for you. So, if you got any questions for Daniel? I mean, you guys have something in common. Y'all both have had encounters. So. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm trying to think of one, but don't know what. What's well, it's, it's all I'm good. To man. Think of one. Hey Josh, I got hey, one. For, I got one hey, for you, on. buddy. It's all good. I think Daniel's got a question for you, man. Okay. About how how close were you um, uh, to the Sasquatch, or do you think you were to the Sasquatch? Uh, oh, hello. Counter. Are you still there, bud? Yes. All right. Did you hear his question? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Ask it again, Daniel. If you don't care. Hey Josh, can you hear me? I don't. I don't think you can hear me. I don't think so, man. Mm. I think. I think. No. I don't think he can. Well, Josh, he was wanting to know how close you were uh, to Sasquatch when you when you had that encounter. It was uh, the one I seen him in the window. Was like with within like maybe a foot or two. It's close enough. <laughs> when I was looking through the w- looking through the window outside. Wow. You know, I'd be afraid to go outside for a while after that. And it makes you wonder why these things look in windows because uh, this seemed to be something that they do a lot. You know, I think they're very curious and uh, uh-huh. things like that. But, Josh, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for thanks for calling. You're welcome. All right, buddy. Have a good night, man. If I figure, if I figure that person is, I'll send them your way. Your way. <laughs> so, yeah. Send them over, man. Send them over. I will. All right, buddy. Talk to y'all later. All right, you t- see you later, man. Bye. Bye, Josh. Well, that went pretty good. You know, these things. Uh, anytime you do something, there's a lot of technical difficulties. My camera died on me in the middle of it, and then yeah. uh, he couldn't hear you. But hey, you know, uh, I just thought we'd do something a little bit different. I know a lot of times, man, people, you know, sit on the other side of that uh, screen and they uh, they listen to all these encounters, and I know that they have more questions than I ask sometimes. So. Just wanted to do something a little bit different. And uh, guys, don't be afraid to call me and Daniel. Just uh, we're pretty laid back guys, man. Just I got my coffee. Where's your coffee at, Daniel? Do you have uh, your coffee? I don't. I'm drinking like Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that. I guess that that's okay. I, uh, I I'm a real real men drink coffee though. I'll just I'll just say that. 
Oh, what are you saying? No, I'm kidding, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a hard time. Uh, so, listen, I had a thought that, um, you know, I, I've not kept it a secret at all that, I, you know, faith is super important to me. And I, I look at this through a biblical lens. And you know, everybody has lots of different opinions, and, and we can all have that. But I was going to read something I come across the other day that I thought was super, super interesting. And uh, not to get all, you know, whatever, but it's it's important. And I look at things through through the lens of, of the Bible. But how many of you guys know about King Nebuchadnezzar, if I can say that right? Do you know? Are you familiar with him, Daniel? I, I've heard that name, but I, I honestly, I could not tell you. So there's a scripture. I believe it is, uh, uh, hang on just a second. It's in Daniel. Matter of fact, how ironic is that? Name, so it Daniel. says, yeah, I know, right? But it says that... Uh, because basically he of his pride, but um, so for for I think it was seven seasons, uh, he was forced to. This is weird, right? Like, and I don't know where this fits in the context of Bigfoot, but it says he was forced to go away from people. He began to eat grass like an ox. He became wet from dew. His hair grew long like feathers of an eagle, and his nails grew long like the claws of a bird. That's pretty wild, man. And it makes you stop to think. I, I personally think these things are, are, are supernatural beings. I, I think they are either fallen an angels or, or you know, demonic entities. I don't know. And, and I just think that it's a very interesting topic because if they're just flesh and blood, and this is just me talking out loud, you know, it doesn't make sense as to why we've not found a body or, you know, why some people see them and then they'll see orbs. Um, they get sick. Uh, I know there's that aspect of it. And a lot of people talk about um, some of the, the, you know, I don't know what they call it. You can help me out here because I can't remember the word, but basically ultrasound type waves out that they can make you sick. Right. Yeah. For so sound. yeah, for sound, that's the word, but it's really interesting, man. And I, I'd love to hear more of what you think. I know we've talked, I mean, a ton, but um, what are your thoughts on it, man? Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not dismissing, you know, I, I'm definitely not going to dismiss somebody's faith, you know, especially, you know, if their belief is a faith, you know, faith based, you know, because it's not not for me to do that. But everything that I've seen, everything that I've encountered, it's all 100 percent physical. Like I, you know, I didn't see a, a dimensional porthole open up and and uh, them walk in or walk out. Um, I've seen video on YouTube um, where um, really left my head, me scratching my head when I watched it. And I had to watch it yeah. a few times. Um, do I think they have the ability to cloak themselves? Not in the in the sense like predator or anything like that. But I think the way that their their hair is and things like that. Um, maybe able to uh, uh, absorb light or reflect light or whatever, because I mean, I've seen video where, where people, you know, they're shooting video, whatever. And then, you know, they don't see anything. And then they do like a review of their video and they catch something like it, it was there for the whole time and it moved just a little bit and it got caught on camera. Um, again, I'm not, gonna dismiss any of that you know right. that what people may believe do they believe it's the nephilim i don't for some reason i just don't believe that 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 they're nephilim i think you know they say the nephilim is a race of giants um and when i think of giants i don't think of giants as being seven feet tall eight feet tall nine feet tall i think of giants being like 12 feet tall you know 20 feet tall um and there's there's stories, there's reports out there where there's been uh, skeletal remains that are 15 feet tall, you know, right. that are out there. Um, that's where I think, now do I think Nephilim are real? Absolutely. I think, you know, the Nephilim is really real. It's in the Book of Enoch. I haven't read the Book of Enoch. I've heard a lot about it. Um, you'll hear other stories about the giant of Kandahar, which is in Afghanistan. Um, you know, that's... You know, that's a very well documented story, uh, and it's not just hearsay. It's, it's coming from actual military officials, um, 
other other sources that that are in the know right and that, that it's been leaked out so do i think the nephilim are different than than sasquatch absolutely i think it's different but i definitely will not dismiss the fact that you know nephilim, nephilim exist or sasquatch exists so yeah i'll tell you it's there's a lot of unknown in god's universe and and i think you know you get into trouble when people start saying the the word expert because i I don't think there is such a thing as an expert when it, when it comes to this topic. You know, you can have really strong opinions, you can have evidence, you can have thoughts, but you know, when somebody uses the word expert, it, it really makes me. Um, I just don't. I don't, I don't put any credence to that because it's how can you be an expert? But guys, if you want to call in and talk about this topic, you can call four seven nine three four five thirteen seventy seven. We'd love to have you on the show. And uh, hear your thoughts and uh, and your opinions, but it's a fun topic. I, I love talking about it. And you know, there was a lot of things when I was a cop that I saw. I just I couldn't explain. And well, I want to hear some of that stuff. Oh man, I have so many stories. Before I jump into something like that, I will tell you uh, about one uh, phone call that I had with a gentleman. I never could get him on the show. And and let me see if I can get. Uh, the story out there uh, correctly. I'm sure I'll miss something, but he said when he was a kid growing up, um, I know right where the spots had up in there. Um, matter of fact, I'm not very far from there right now. And being that you spent a lot of time in the military, I, I think this story would, would interest you a lot. And I would love to hear your opinion. Uh, thanks for your service, by the way. Uh, but so he said that uh, him and his dad and the buddy went hunting one day and his dad dropped him off and uh, drove on down the road. And they were out there hunting. Really wooded area, um, dense forest, pretty far out, real rural uh, at the time. Not so much anymore. But so they were out there hunting. And then they kept hearing something really, really loud uh, in the woods. And it got closer and closer. And then they heard a really, really loud scream, the typical Bigfoot scream that people talk about, you know, rattles your chest, uh, definitely not any kind of known animal uh, that we know of. And uh, they said the next thing you know, they saw this, you know, huge black figure through the brush and it jumped into a tree. And of course, that's kind of like your typical type of Bigfoot encounter. But where it gets really strange is he said this thing cloaked uh, and, and he said, you know, he was talking about the movie predator he's like if you've seen that that's what it did it was up in the trees kind of cloaked and then it just took off so he said next thing is no his dad's you know peeling in there they they jump in the back of the truck and they take off and so it took them about a week to get their nerves together where they would come back and so they they came back and uh he said when they came back they were met by uh the military i don't know what branch i don't know what but he said that they they had it all fenced off military personnel was there and they wouldn't let them uh go in there so so they lasted about a year they were there in the area for about a year and when they went back finally the military left they walked back into the woods and in all the trees around the area there were platforms probably 10 foot, eight foot, you know, built in different areas. And it was just this really weird, like there were probably about five different platforms. He said in this one space and, um, you know, who knows what that was, but it makes you wonder, you know, what was going on with that. But that's one of the strangest encounters I've heard. I, I've, I've had coffee with the guy. I've talked to him on the phone. I just couldn't get him on the show, but, uh, thought that was pretty interesting, man. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Well, okay. So, they said that they saw a like a black figure yeah like it you know it, you know how if you're you're out in the woods and you can see something a little ways off you don't have a yeah. clear picture of it but you can tell there's something there right? right so it was a if i remember right it was you know really really big um and then when they saw it it, it kind of jumped up into the tree and then it cloaked like a cloak you know um so that's of course so, this is secondhand information, right? And that's just what what he okay, told me. So, but. And, and did he did he say how far apart these platforms were? No, no. And I never asked him. I he he did say that they were anywhere between six to ten foot off the ground, um, and there was a five five or six platforms in this one area. And 
you know, if my first question is, is why would they like, what, what are they doing there? Like kind of a deal are they doing there? You know, and you can go to the area right now. Uh, I won't say where it's at, but I've been there. I've, I've hiked there, um, been out in the woods there. Um, definitely an odd feeling, uh, there, but you know, I don't know. Um, the guy is a, uh, uh, he's very truthful. Um, you know, we talked to a lot of people and, and you can always tell somebody's just whatever. He, he didn't really want to come forward with the story. I kept on him like, Hey, I want to know more. Cause he, you know, he texted me one day. He's like, Hey, I've got something you need to hear. And, uh, but, uh, I hadn't talked to him in probably, I don't know, three or four months now, but yeah. Is, is this, is this a known like military training area? No. No, it's not. And it's, it's basically close to a state park. It is not uh, a known military training area, which, you know, that get into the missing 411 stuff and, in national and state parks and, and all that whole thing, man, they, you know, there's a lot of weird stuff that happens there. So, um, they close this place down. You can still go and hike. You can still go in and, you know, check the whole area out, but the, they don't, they don't take care of the property anymore. So and the reason I'm asking all these type of questions is, you know, there there are reports, you know, that they're working on like an exoskeleton for soldiers that mm-hmm. will allow soldiers to one uh, lift more weight, um, move faster, um, probably jump higher. You know, it's, it's it's like an exoskeleton. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like. You know some type of of program where they're kind of doing like a like a super soldier type thing. I'm not saying they're interjecting soldiers with something, but they could be testing like a suit, you know, like a a, a battle used for like a battlefield um, where they would have the ability to cloak. Uh, you know, maybe my only problem with that is this happened. Man, he's probably he's around my age. You know, and I'm I'm 44, so he was just a kid. I think he was like 10. So it, it was like you know, 30 years ago. And I don't know that the military had that kind of, kind of technology, uh, back then, but it, it does make you wonder. I know that there's a lot of things that the government knows uh, about that. Uh, yeah, I know that when I was a cop, there's things we knew that, that we just, you just didn't tell people, but, um, I thought so it was pretty interesting, man. I'm kind of monitoring our chat and, yeah. uh, um, Bigfoot reports and data is stating cryptid army. Oh, now think about that. Now, you know what? How think about that. Okay. No, that that makes what sense. Would be terrifying. Like seriously, say, say for some reason, the government's able to, you know, I don't know, clone them or whatever, or control you know, them, capture them, control them, mm-hmm. put an implant in their head or something, mm-hmm. control them. Um, and then cryptid army. Uh, see. crazy. Hey, can you message him back and see if he'll jump on and give us a call? That's, that's uh, Harley. Uh, really, yeah. really great guy. He's been on the show before. Um, he says, hey, Owens, uh, they now just like, what do you say? Just, they like love. No, I'll say, Hey, Harley, give us a call. Um, you know, I, this is off topic, but this tells you how much reach the, the government has. I, uh, the town that I worked in, I got out with this guy one night. And for you guys who don't know, when somebody runs your driver's license, they run it through, you know, in Arkansas, it's the ACIC system and uh, different systems. And it pulls back your your criminal history or your driving record or if you have insurance or whatever. And so we got out with this guy about 2 o'clock in the morning in this town. And I've told this story before, I think, on this channel. But so – He's walking around. There's a lot of businesses there. And uh, he's probably at the time in his in his 30s. This was probably, I don't know, 15 years ago when this happened. And uh, anyways, get his driver's license. And he looks at me and goes, you don't, you don't want to run that through through the system. I said, well, you know, why not? And he's like, Cause, hey, we got to be Harley. It's Harley. I'll get back. Hang on. Harley. Hello. Josh. What's up, buddy? Not so much. How are you doing? Man, I'm good, dude. I'm I'm good. I'm I'm glad you uh jumped on, man. You're cutting out a little bit, Josh. 
Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I yeah, got I can you, hear you now. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. How's uh how's things going? It's going all right. Going all right. Stay good. busy. Well, that's good, man. That's good. Guys, for you who don't know, Harley, I think he was I don't know how many episodes ago it was, but uh you gotta go look up his uh his encounter. Really good. He got some good audio and and uh West Virginia, right, Harley? Uh it was Virginia. Virginia. Pretty scary encounter and that kinda he kind of jumped into the rabbit hole like most of us uh, do, and he's had several encounters since then. But, man, that was a really interesting comment you you left. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Well, you know, I think that the military, they know. I mean, and who's to say that they don't have – I mean, I'm sure that they do. They have bodies, and, you know, and who's to say that they ain't already made like a human super soldier or something, or they haven't manipulated a, a genome or something for these creatures, you know, you, there's a lot of debate behind the Sasquatch genome project. And, you know, and I think quite frankly, it's, it's real, you know, the Sasquatch genome. I mean, it's the, the mitochondrial DNA from a Bigfoot is a human mother from the middle East. And then the nuclear DNA is something completely unknown. Well, I know you've done a lot more researches uh, with this than, than I have. And why don't you tell our listeners uh, about your channel real quick too, before we jump off into, into the rest of this topic. Yeah. Uh, my Facebook group and YouTube channel and, uh, TikToks, Bigfoot reports and data. Uh, you know, I, I go out and I hike two, three times a week and I utilize a back trail camera, uh, just like Scott Carpenter did. May he rest in peace. Uh, he was a huge inspiration for what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I've, I've captured some pretty wild things just like he did, uh, you know, and, it's, they're in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And, uh, you know, I never imagined that I'd be doing Bigfoot research. And here I am almost four years after my first encounter, and I'm, I'm out there doing it. And I've, I've had two more Bigfoot encounters, and I've also recently uh, had a dogman encounter this year as well. Yeah, man, you're doing some good stuff, and I, I love uh, staying up with you guys. If you if you love this kind of stuff, make sure to follow him on all those platforms. He does a, he does a great job, and – a lot of good information and, and things like that. Um, if you're cool with it, Harley, I, I would love for them to hear your encounter with dog, man. I know when you told me that, that, that gave me chills. yeah, I know Daniel, you'd like to hear it too. Well, I was really, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it definitely threw a curveball at me. I was not expecting it. Uh, so I went, uh, January 29th, uh, I go, out and i'm driving and i changed my mind i'm like well i'm gonna go try some different spots you know this area that i've been going to since i started december 7th i'm like well it's i've been pushing it pretty hard so i'm like i need to go try and find some new spots well i go to this first spot at the bottom of the mountain it's across the creek from where i had been going and uh there was a campground nearby so i'm checking that place out and i'm I'm finding some signs. I find this huge asterisk on the ground made out of trees and snapped off, and they were still green, so it was freshly made. I'm like, well, that's not going to just – why would trees just so happen to fall and make an asterisk? Yeah. I'm like, that, that means something. And I find these huge rocks that were stacked in three that were like 20 yards away from each other. I'm like, well, those are awfully big rocks. I mean, I couldn't pick them up. So I'm like, that's – that's that's questionable you know i mean i was finding some twist breaks and stuff like that you know twist breaks you know i think that's probably a, a really good telltale sign of them because you know straight line winds that's not going to twist a tree you know that takes something with hands to be able to twist a tree and break it and i'm i'm going through this area and i'm looking i'm like okay there there's signs here just not 100 percent. so i go up further towards the campground and uh, I find this mountain trail, and so I hike up the mountain trail. Well, I, I'm hiking for probably about 25, 30 minutes, and, uh, you know, I'm finding some signs, and I, I go to a fork in the trail, and it goes left and it goes right. And uh, I look towards the right of the trail, and it looked too grown up, and I was like, well, I guess I'm going further up the mountain. Well, I go further up the mountain, and uh I see this trail that kicks off to the right. I mean, it was it wasn't a natural. It wasn't a trail that the game or park services had made. It was a different trail, and I'm like, okay. 
So I just go over through there and I'm looking and I find two huge twist brakes and a bunch of other like structures. And I'm like, man, if I'm going to run into something, it's going to be a Bigfoot right now. I was like, this is too good to be true. Because there was one that was twisted and it was facing up the mountain. And it was probably about eight, eight and a half foot off the ground. I could reach up and almost touch it. I'm six six. I could reach up and almost touch it. And the other one, Lord, that one was probably 12, 13 foot off the ground. I, it was huge. And these these trees were probably about seven, eight inches around. I mean, they, they're pretty good sized trees. So I'm sitting here looking around, and I go back to the main trail, and I just had that feeling I was being watched. I was like, I'm, this, this is some deja vu right here. And I'm just hiking along, and I come to a curve in the trail, and I'm sitting here, and I look at my phone. I had 30% battery. Well, I'm sitting here looking. I'm like, well, I... I kind of have a decision to make. Well, I look, I look back down, and my phone said ten percent battery, and it just shut off. And I was like, "Oh my god, this is deja vu from four years ago." Whenever I seen my first book, but I was like, "Okay, I got a decision to make." It was starting to snow, and I'm like, "I got a decision to make." I was getting cold. I packed a lot so I didn't burn up, and I'm like, "I got. I'm just going to go home." Well, I turn, and I didn't walk. 10, 15 foot, and I heard something behind me to my right, and I'm like, okay, here we go. I, it's behind me, and I'm going to turn and look at it. So I turned, and I looked, and I seen it. It was laying there flat on the ground. It's huge canine, brown, yellow eyes. It was laying flat on the ground. This thing pushes itself up off the ground with its arms, and it takes three steps, and it's right in front of me. I mean, probably 15 yards, and it's growling at me. It's snarling. It's it's just a dark brown. It's got these huge yellow eyes, and it literally looks like you know what the depiction of werewolves are in a movie. You know, it's it's uncanny how that these things are reminiscent of something from a movie. It's almost like there's truth in the movies. Wow! And it's growling at me, and it's I ended up just looking at this thing and i'm just like this thing's gonna kill me and I, like looking into this thing's eyes there's no soul it's just blank it's an empty void and you look into a bigfoot's eyes there's something there but when you look into one of these dog man creatures it's 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 a bad it's a bad feeling and you know this thing was it was huge and like this in between like on top of its head in between its ears was flat and like it's it's now was just snudged up into its nose and you know it's it, its hands were almost like raccoon hands it was it was a, it was a wild looking creature it was insane you know and its tail was almost like a fox's tail it's this big and poofy like a fox's and it's, it's the strangest thing to me you know all these reports of dog man having these backwards facing legs and this thing had forward facing legs like a human wild and I, I was that was what was strange to me you know i was like all these stories that i've heard of these things having backwards facing legs and just so happened on one i seen had forward facing legs i just it's just weird and and that's so i'm just standing there looking at this thing and it was just a matter of time and i'm just like i gotta run so i take off down the mountain and you know i had mud boots on and i i, I have never moved so fast in my life and this thing was chasing me and I crossed this first bridge, and I go across in the second bridge, and it stopped. I don't know if it was its boundary or what. And, you know, I was I was counting my blessings, you know. And I, I pray every time before I go out hiking, you know, just to give me a, a peace of mind. You know, and I think that I've got myself a circle of protection from these things. And that's it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's why so, at the end of every show, I, I tell everybody to stay prayed up because these things, especially dog, man, they're, they're just pure, pure evil. But, uh, but it's it's about, so I got to looking on the map and apparently that spot where I found those twist breaks and stuff, it's an old cemetery and not even a little bit from up from where I had that dog man encounter was another cemetery. So I think these dog man are somehow drawn to these cemeteries but the funny thing is i go back a couple it was a friday after i'd had that encounter and uh i had a compass with me 
and I'm standing in that spot where I had that encounter, and that compass was going haywire. It just kept spinning in circles. Wow. So electromagnetic fields and the paranormal, all, all this stuff is connected. The Bigfoot and then the dog man, it's all, it's all connected, you know. And I think, I think that the Bigfoot and the dog man have a symbiotic relationship. You know, I think that the Bigfoot and the dog man here in the Smoky Mountains, they have been established in a respect of sorts for each other or something, and they're working together. I think, because the funny thing was, uh, me and a good friend of mine, George Lunsford, and Robert Erfler from North Carolina Investigates on January 7th, uh, Jordan, Georgia never seen a Bigfoot. So I bring, they come up from North Carolina and we're out there and we, we find dogman tracks that were five inches across. I mean, they were huge. Wasn't a, wasn't a dog or nothing like that. It was just huge canine that was five inches across. And there was a five foot stride in between each track. So, and then right off in the wood line there from those dogman tracks was, it looks like it, like some juvenile Bigfoots that in there playing around, you know, cause there was smaller, like human like tracks. And as I mean, and then we're talking like that's, that's, that looks like these dog men are guard these juvenile Bigfoot or something, you know, something along those lines. I think that the Bigfoot, I mean, I think that they, I mean, why would two apex predators benefit from just killing each other out? I mean, I think, I think they've established a respect for each other. And, uh, it's it's pretty wild stuff so anyways when me and george like i said he'd never seen a bigfoot and i told robert and his wife to stay on the main trail and me and george dropped off in the holler so we're up on one side of the holler and across from us is the other side and i told george i said there he is because i seen him out of the corner of my eye walking and i tapped him on the shoulder i said there he is he said where i said he's right there he said that's a shadow i said no it's not <laughs> so i start walking towards it and I wasn't 20 yards away from it, and I stepped on this branch. And this Bigfoot reaches out. He puts his hand up on the tree, and he leans out to look for me because he couldn't see me. And all I heard was George say, oh, blank. And it it was wild to share an encounter with him. He he still talks about it to this day. Wow. That's that's some crazy stuff, man. I, I know some of the evidence and, and photos and videos you've sent me. It just... I don't know how anybody can't believe that these things are out there after seeing all the. the well, that you know that, that that really good dog man, the really good dog man image that I have of that dark, the yeah. dark brown dog man where he's peeking out from around the tree looking at me. That's the one I seen. <laughs> I, I ended up seeing that one. You know, I captured I captured that one on film, uh, December seventeenth and January 29th. I seen it. And I, I, I've, I physically seen it. I've seen that photo, so it's no joke. That is a uh, a really scary thing. And man, I I pray for you all the time because I know you're I out there. Photo. I'll yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll make sure you get to it's see. It's just it, a Daniel. matter of time. Yeah, it really is, man. And um, I'm not sure if you can hear Daniel. Daniel, can can you, uh, um, Harley? I don't know if you can hear Daniel or not. If it's just me, you can hear. Hey, Harley, can you hear? Yeah, me? I don't. I, I can just hear you. I can't hear Daniel. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Guys, I apologize. This is something new we're trying and we got to get all the bugs worked out of it. But, uh, you know, h- how long did it take your battery to, to drain? Do you know the time frame? It was instant. It wow. was, it was instant. Cause I looked at it, it said 30% and then it said 10%. Well, it said 30% and I was looking up, looking around and I looked down and it said 10% and it just shut off. Wow. And it was eerily similar to the, how my first experience was with a Bigfoot. Uh, Cause I had seventy percent battery and it was just drained. Oh man, I, I think I think infrasound has a huge effect on that. Oh yeah, definitely. And I I will tell you that um, one of the experiences that I had it, this is not Bigfoot related, but it is definitely spiritual uh, related. Early on in my uh, uh, career, my videographer career, after I left law enforcement, there's a there's a hotel, and I don't say this to bring these things glory. Uh, cause, but I think it's important that we know what we fight against so that these things are real and they're out there. Right. Uh, but there's a, uh, mm-hmm, an interview absolutely. I was doing at, at a hotel, one of the most haunted hotels in America. Uh, it's not far from, from where I live. And I was doing an interview there and, uh, my batteries on my cameras, I had everything set up, everything fully charged. They went from 100% to zero in less than like a one or two minutes. And I remember the room, mm-hmm got cold, got really chilly. And then the batteries were just drained. And 
you know, that's why I kind of lean to these things being more, more spiritual than, than physical. But uh, anyways, man, uh, guys, you got to go check out Harley's channel. Tell them again where they can find you. Yeah. Uh, on Facebook, uh, YouTube and uh, TikTok, uh, Bigfoot reports and data, not the, a it's and symbol, not a, a and D it's the and symbol. Awesome, man. I, yeah. I uh, do what Daniel. It was that called the ampersand? No, that's at. Yeah. So, and the ant sign. Yeah. 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 So guys, go check him out. Give him a follow. Thanks for jumping on Harley. I'm sure we'll talk real soon, man. Yes, sir. We hey. will. I, I need to get a de- uh, schedule set with you. Um, I've just been so busy, man. I, I understand. I went hiking yesterday and checked out some things and uh, I got hit by ampersand pretty hard. I still got a headache from that wow. from yesterday. Well, man, we'll, we'll get together. We'll have you on. I, I want uh, people to hear about this. It's important that people are educated and they know these things are out there. But, man, be careful. I'll continue to pray for you, man. Keep me, keep me posted. We'll get yeah, together. Sure. Real soon. All right, buddy. Thanks for, thanks for jumping on. I appreciate it, brother. All right, buddy. No problem. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, bye. Hey, so pretty th- crazy stuff, man. That is that is wild, you know, and I yeah. wish you could have heard me because I would like to, t- I want, you know, hopefully he'll stay on and he'll hear this because I want to, uh, you know, tell a story that my dad told me one time um, when he was uh, living in Alaska and he, this is before he uh, went to basic and then off to Vietnam, he'd been out hunting and he, the way my dad hunted, he, there was hardly ever any deer stands, you know, the one time that that had the incident with my boot being untied. You know, it's, it's one of the very few times my dad um, ever um, used a deer stand. I think the reason he used a deer stand is because I was with him and I was yeah. young at the time, you know, but every other time that I'd gone hunting with him, we, we looked for signs and we would stalk the deer and we would try to follow him and try to, you know, maybe circle, uh, you know, flank him or whatever and get a good shot off. So this is when, like I said, prior to him going in, into the military and going over to Vietnam, he had been hunting and it was elk season and he was up in Alaska. He had been following this herd of elk and uh, he saw this herd of elk in the distance go down this hill, down like this ravine or whatever, and then back up this one side of this this hill. And as he was watching, he was scoping in, he was guessing it was probably about 600, about 600 yards uh, if he wanted to take a shot and he, of course he's going for one of the big bulls and as it was as it was going up he brought his rifle up was scoping in on it and something spooked the elk to where it bolted in a, 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 a way that my dad didn't even anticipate like it just took off a different way so he's like well, you know what a, a predator is going to spook an elk Oh yeah. Okay. And I don't know if you've ever seen an elk. Elk are huge. Massive. Elk, I think the only thing bigger than an elk out there is is a moose. Yeah. Elk can weigh like anywhere between what six hundred and a thousand pounds, I think. So they're Easy. gigantic animals. And so he was like kind of scoping to see, you know, you know what possibly could could do this. And so he's kind of looking at you worth his scope and stuff, and he sees something. He's not really sure, so he takes out his his binoculars. He's got pretty high power binoculars, and he starts looking through, and he sees. He said he goes, "It was the biggest and the blackest wolf he'd ever seen. Like this hmm. thing was huge, and it was it was on the the ridge that the elks went up on. Okay, so he's guesstimating again, probably six hundred yards. Okay." And so he's watching, he's fixated on. So he's watching it with his, with his binoculars and he goes, it stood up. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean it stood up? And he's like, he's like, Daniel, I'm telling you as sure as I'm sitting here with you right now, it stood up. It put its hand Mm. on the, and started sniffing the air and then looked over at the ridge that he was on and he was scanning the ridge line. He, my dad was watching him scan the ridge line and then wow. he'd stop and he like, literally they locked eyes. And my dad was slowly reached over. He was holding the knocks up like this. He slowly reached over, was pulling his rifle up to him and he goes and he looked again and it wasn't there. So he started looking at looking and it was coming down the ridge like mm-hmm. towards him. He heard a, 
a, a bugle, like a, a, an elk bugle, and it stopped. It sniffed the air. It took off on all fours back up the ridge towards where the elk had gone up and over the, the, the crest of the ridge. Stood up again about halfway up the ridge on two feet and then took off running on two feet up over the ridge. Wow. And my dad said he as soon as he saw it go over the, the, the crest of that ridge, he grabbed his stuff and ran back to back to his truck. Got in his truck Jeez. and drove in, drove into town. And he said there's no doubt in his mind that he saw a werewolf. Well, yeah, that's you know, these things are crazy. And I I'm I'm really, really scared of these things because I think they have just pure evil intent and I think they thrive on fear and you know, your dad truly is very fortunate that he made it out of that situation because those things are not good. I had a guest on the show and um, really great guy. He uh, he's overseas. He's currently deployed, I believe, but he lived in, uh, uh, I think it was Mississippi. And I'm going to say that wrong, but I know you're familiar with that story, but Guys, this this encounter was probably one of the scariest I ever heard. But he was on his way to uh, to uh, to the military. You know, wasn't being deployed. He was there for uh, uh, two weeks out, I think. Anyway, so he was driving there, and he saw a, a, a dogman creature. And he said this thing was on all fours. Thought it was a cow. And the closer he got to it, the bigger it was. It stood up, wrapped its its hand around a tree, and just pulled itself up and, and basically looked at him. He didn't know what to do, so he you know driving and, and texted his dad and his dad said you just you need to leave and uh so he comes back and he i think he lived 10 miles from where that happened and this this story really got me um because that's it's just one of these things about the the power of prayer and this is why i tell you guys to stay prayed up one of the reasons but so he said it was at uh, about midnight he heard something outside of his window breathing real heavy you know and um so he woke up and he kind of pushed out of his mind and just went to bed. And he said that his, I think it was his grandpa lived with him at the time and was sick. And they had this big window and his grandpa was sitting there. And he'd, he'd go up there at night and he would look out the window because he couldn't sleep because he was, he was, you know, in a lot of pain. And so he saw this black thing on all fours, if I remember correctly, standing outside there watching the house. And so he said that the next day he gets up and he's on his way to work and his dad calls him and he goes, you know, they got to talking about what had happened and he, his dad asked him, he goes, well, what, what time was that? And he goes around 12, 1230, I think. And he said, well, you're not going to believe this. He said, but God woke me up around that time and told me to pray for you that, that you weren't okay. And uh, thank goodness for those prayers, man. And I've heard so many people that uh, have these kind of encounters and, uh, and, and pray and these things leave, but man, it makes you wonder what all's out there, Daniel. Um, and I know for whatever reason, man, you've had several encounters with these kind of creatures and, and a lot of different different things. And you've been a really big part of this show, man. And I appreciate you you being here and, and coming on. And guys, we'll give a few more minutes if somebody else wants to call. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. Um, I know this is something completely different. I can't see the chats in the channel. So if you're making yeah. comments, like, okay, okay, cool. Let me know if somebody says anything because I can't see them. Uh, I do. But Can I give a shout out? Yeah, I'll do it, man. So let's see. People I've seen in the chat so far, Daniel Williams, give you a shout out there. Uh, Josh Hunter, Alexander85, True Heart, um, Jay, uh, Bigfoot Reports and Data, Harley, we got you, and Mark Ritter. Hey, uh, thanks for jumping in on the chat, guys. If you want to call in, go ahead and call in 87, or excuse me, 479-345-1377. Give us a call. Yeah, I'd love to talk to you guys. I know this is different, but I know a lot of times, man, you guys maybe not have had an encounter and, and haven't experienced this, but you know, you still maybe have questions or, or want to talk about it because it's a very interesting. Here's somebody. Hang on just a second. If I can get this open. Okay, here we go. Is this Mark? Hey, Mark, how are you, man? Right. 
you know, it makes you, it makes you wonder. And I, I, that's why I say there's a supernatural element to these things, especially when it comes to dog, man. And, um, you know, and, 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 you know, there's no wrong opinion, man. And, it, but I can tell you, I can tell you firsthand, I, I've known Harley for a while and Harley is a very honest, honest man. Uh, and, but, you know, there's a lot of things that we just don't understand that's out there. But have have you ever had an encounter with Bigfoot or, or a different cryptoid? Well, you know, it's one of these things that just you never know. And I think if you go out and, and you start looking for it, you're probably not going to find it. But uh you know, there's also that saying, this is be careful what you ask for, because as Daniel can probably tell you, man, it, it's a life changing experience. Um, Daniel, how did it change your life, man? Why don't you tell, why don't you tell Mark how it changed your, your life? Okay. Um, one, I, I can't hear, I can't hear Mark at all. Um, so he'll, I, I think, I know there's a little bit of a delay on the live feed going on Facebook. So hopefully we'll be able to, or uh, on YouTube. So hopefully you'll be able to hear this. Um, you know, there, there's, I used, when I was a kid, I used to go, it just, it didn't matter. I would go as deep in the woods as, as I wanted to, and I'd have no fear and I have no apprehension uh, uh, at all. You know, there, I would, I would just want to be out there, you know, hang out, hiking, whatever, camping. And when I had um, a couple of my experiences, I won't, I won't go deep into the woods anymore. I, I just won't. Uh, yeah. I, I will stay on paths. I will stay, you know, uh, if there's a, a defined path or paved or one that's been well-worn by, you know, years and years of hikers using it, I'll stay on it. If, if, if I plan on doing any camping, I'm not going to uh, camp off, off trail. I'm not going to camp in an area that's not designated to, uh, as a camping spot. It's just not going to happen. Um, well, I think that, that that does affect you. And, and Mark, I don't know if you can tell. I think you guys are kind of talking over each other uh, because I don't I don't think that he can hear you, and I don't think you can hear him. But Daniel was basically saying he won't go into the woods anymore, real deep deep into the woods. And I know Daniel known him for a while now, and he, I know he, his love for the woods. He, he loves the woods, but that changed it for him. So you know, keep an eye out, Mark. You never know what you're going to say, He's there, man. But I. Oh, he did. He's had several encounters. I, I would encourage you to go back and, and look at some of the videos I have on my channel. Uh, he's been on the show several times. He's had several really scary encounters. But thanks for calling in, man. I appreciate you uh, giving us a call. All right, man. Have a good night. Okay, man. I I need to figure out why there's some kind of issue with uh, on your end. But we'll get together, guys. We'll, we'll figure it out. But um. Yeah, can you still uh, hear me, Daniel? Yeah, I'm still here with you. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring chat a little bit, and I'm trying to, to talk to people on chat, and you know. Cool. So, <laughs> well, I appreciate you doing that. I'm gonna do what a co-host is doing, if that's what you want to call me. So, <laughs> yeah, today. yeah, this is, uh, this is something completely different. But you know, if you can have a little fun with it, then uh, you know, we're, what are we doing? But this, this is a very serious topic, and. You know, um, I've not had, I think, matter of fact, I've only had one dog man encounter on the channel. And um, I think it's a completely different, different, uh, different thing, man. I think they're just pure evil. And, uh, you know, not that Bigfoot can't be, but man, they, that, that really scares me. And I will tell you to kind of go into what you talked about when Mark called is, is when you're in the woods and you hear that twig snap or you have this certain feeling, it really makes you uneasy and, and it makes you, makes you second guess. And, and knowing that these things are out there, man, it does, it does take that from you, man. It takes that, uh, that joy, especially if you're a hunter, um, you know, it takes that away. And uh, I don't know if there's any way to recover from that, man. I mean, I've heard stories and stuff of people uh, who are avid hunters, hunters their whole life, you know, they since they could could walk and 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 climb up in a deer stand with their dad and then go into the by themselves you know now they're you know 45 50 60 years old and they've hunted you know their entire life and they have one of these chance encounters and they just stop hunting they never go back in the woods you know and again 
you could look back at some of my my experiences you know again um you know mark you're just i don't know if you're still in the chat with us or not and if, if you're watching this you know i've only had one confirmed sighting but i've had you know several experiences um and after you know being an adult and now the power of the internet uh you're right. able to go on youtube and and search go on google and search you know i can now go back and say those experiences that i had could very well have been um, uh, 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 could have been we got, we got another call looks like hello hey how's it going man good i I think you might have to talk a little closer to your phone. I can I can barely hear you, man. Lots better. Daniel, can you hear him? Nope, I cannot. Nope. Okay. Well, man, thanks for calling in. Um, I uh, Daniel won't be able to hear you if you have any questions for him, but uh, um, I would love to uh, hear if you've had an encounter with Bigfoot or, or uh, what you wanted to talk about. Yeah, man. Why don't you uh, Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, about one of your uh, well, first encounters? I guess you've had several, so tell us about the first encounter you had. Love to hear about it. Hey, uh, uh, right now in the chat, they're saying no audio, no, no audio in the chat. Okay. So no, no audio. I'll have to get that fixed. I'm not sure what's going on, but thanks for, thanks for letting me know. Um, and the gentleman that just called, give us, <laughs> give us a try again. We'll figure this out, figure out what's going on with it. And like I said, this is just the first time we've done this and we wanted to, to see and hopefully they could have they they heard everybody else and hopefully they could hear mark but uh, uh anyways john yeah, i think right, john boat and nancy dobson's are saying there's no audio they can't hear so they can't hear you um they can't hear me they can't hear any of the calls well that's a problem <laughs> well maybe it's time that we jump off and uh and uh we'll leave this up there and uh hopefully next time when we do this again um and uh, if you guys like this kind of content, if you can hear me, if not, uh, we'll jump on here. We'll try to do my goal is to try to do one of these a month if I can. So anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Daniel, thanks for being here, man. Hey, brother. I loved it. Yeah, it was good, man. It was really hopefully, good. Hope, hopefully help me be part of the next one. Yeah, man. We'll, we'll get you back on here. I love talking with you. You'll have to drink some coffee instead of a Diet Coke, though. No, I don't know. Mountain Dew, brother. <laughs> Mountain Dew. Okay, my bad. My bad. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. As much as did. Uh, yeah. Nancy says, I can hear you too, just can't hear the caller. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. I, I would guess that's why they were still staying here watching. Uh, but uh, you guys are awesome. I, I will say now that I know you can hear me, uh, I am unbelievably humbled by the support of this channel and the platform. <laughs> there i really do love doing this and uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun and i've met some incredible people made some amazing lifetime friends like daniel uh he came on the show and we just really hit it off. matter of fact if you guys look right back here he sent me something a few, year, uh, a few months back and uh that's why that's hanging back there but, um i really do appreciate the support i appreciate all the members i appreciate everybody that's here uh, it's been it's just been a blast. It's been a lot of fun. So um, we'll continue to get these shows out there. Uh, Monday, tomorrow, I have a really good episode dropping. Uh, a lady that had a very scary encounter uh, when she was about eight years old in the mountains of Utah. This one's very, 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 very good and really scary. I, uh, some of these encounters, here, man, I'm like, I, I feel for these people, these, these encounters. Uh, I, I appreciate 
they trust me enough to come on here and to share these encounters. Guys, I, I run and operate a, uh, a video production company all the time, and I do my very best to get these out and to do as many of them as I can. I, I was doing two a week for a while, and I try to at least do one a week uh, as I can, but it's hard sometimes with that, with I do, you know, working a full time job and then, and then, then this. But, uh, but I appreciate you guys being here, guys. And, and Daniel, if you got anything else to say, if not, man, I'm going to jump off here. I'm, uh, I'm answering chat. So, <laughs> well, that's good, man. Are they, if people are still chatting, what's, what are they saying, man? Um, well, let's see. Again, Nancy said, uh, it's, they could she can hear us, but just not the callers. Again, Nancy, I couldn't hear the callers either. Um, and then I said, thank you. She said, welcome. And then I said, everyone, please bear with us. It's the first time doing this, and we're working on uh, all the bugs. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for the calls. Awesome. Awesome. Nancy, thank you for the comments and for being here. And You guys are awesome. Daniel, you're awesome. And uh, you guys awesome. continue to be safe and uh, stay prayed up. It's very, very, very important. If you're out exploring, looking for Bigfoot, be careful. Watch your six. And uh, just uh, just be careful out there. Be safe. And we will see you guys in the next episode. So you out? I'm done. All right, buddy. Thanks, guys. Uh-oh. Are you still recording? Can you hear me? Yeah. Bro. So Nancy says, stay safe. Yeah. And did you hear that? No. Go ahead. Nancy what was Dob it? Nancy Dobbins said, stay safe. Okay. And Alexandra85, who is a member. Yeah, awesome member. Appreciate it. Uh, Josh and Daniel make a great team. Glad you guys like it. I, uh, me and Daniel talk almost every single day. And uh, a lot of things in common. That's what I love about this is the community that we build. And he's a great guy, guys. And, and I love having him on. We do this again. I'll make sure to have him back in, in these, these lives. You know. As I tell him, he's, he's the man. No, you're the man. You know, you know you are <laughs> yeah i think we make a good team it's a lot of fun so uh you guys are awesome thanks for being here i know this was different uh, it's like an hour and 28 minutes so that's the longest uh thing i've done so far so yeah awesome thanks for sticking with us guys you got anything else you want to say before we jump off again hey guys thank you so much appreciate it uh, again please hang in there with us the next one we promise will be even better um hopefully I'll be able to have a better setup where I have a mic and maybe some earphones and then we can maybe get everything going on. So, but again, thank you so much for supporting my friend, Josh. Uh, he is a truly, truly a great guy. Um, if you have a story out there, uh, an, yeah. an encounter, an experience, uh, you've never been too sure if you want to, you want to share it or not. Josh is very easy to talk to. He does not pass any judgment. Uh, mm -hmm. He listens and uh, it's very comfortable to talk to him. So love yeah. to hear your story. Love to hear your encounter, sightings, encounters. Even if you don't think, you know, you're sure what it is. It just left you left you scratching your head, you know, hit Josh up. Yeah, I want to talk to you guys. You can reach me. Thanks for the kind words, Daniel, by the way. I appreciate that. And thanks, guys, for again, for trusting me with these encounters and your stories. But you can send them to me at, at by email at video at jazzcreativeAR.com. So it's the best way to get a hold of me. Sometimes it takes me a while to get to you. I'm super busy, but I will. If you email me, I will reach out, I promise. So, all right, guys. I'm out of here, man. Bye, guys. See you, Daniel. Peace. You guys matter. Stay prayed up. See ya. Bye.